And this episode is being sponsored by Great Courses Plus, which is an online video learning site. Tune in to the end of the video and we'll give you information on a special offer. We're in the uh, Second World War Hall at the Tank Museum, one of the most popular galleries for visitors and one with the mo some of the most iconic vehicles. Um, the hall was last displayed in 2009 with new interpretation and then in 2017 we added the Tiger display. Time's now come to redevelop the whole space and that's over 3,000 square metres of, of exhibition gallery. Uh, we're de developing the hall in two phases. Uh, the first phase will be delivered next spring for 2020 and the following phase, phase two, in 2021. Back in 2017, we carried out a, quite a comprehensive consultation period with visitors, staff, volunteers, school groups, uh, stakeholders really for the museum. Uh, and the results of that, those surveys showed us that people were very interested in learning about the battles and the campaigns of tank crews during the war. Um, and that's what we focus the new exhibition on and what, what it's been designed around. So the curator, the head of collections, our historian, got together to choose the vehicles and the battles that are going to be used in the exhibition. And the first phase will go from the Battle of Arras in May 1940 right through to the Normandy campaign in 1944. The whole design process has taken the best part of two years. Uh, we've got quite a long process to bring together, but we're now get to the point where we've appointed contractors to actually bring it to fruition for next Easter. As you've probably gathered by now, we're going to carry out quite a lot of work um, on the redevelopment of the Second World War Hall, which will, in, which will involve uh, moving a, an awful lot of vehicles, in fact, nearly every single one in this hall. And that job is my responsibility. In order to tow the tanks, we use something called holly bones, and they're basically shaped in, in the form of an A. At the two points of the A, they go on to the actual tank itself that's being towed and at the point of the A goes on to the towing vehicle. So wherever the towing vehicle goes, the other one follows. And a slightly shorter route unfortunately, but um, that's not a problem once we get used to it. Um, there are two sets of holly bones available. There's 72 tonne, which are great big heavy things, and 30 tonne, which are the smaller medium tanks. We have four vehicles available to us. Um, our favourite is the Centurion Arv, which is the armoured recovery vehicle. Um, that is probably the best bit of kit you could possibly have. It it's, uh, does everything at a very slow pace and, um, and also is very effective. And we found out that other organisations around the world still use these um, instead of um, more modern vehicles. The second vehicle available is the Chieftain Arv. It's not very good in the halls, but it's a good vehicle for towing in a straight line. Um, it has what they call a centrifugal clutch and until that's engaged the tank doesn't move very far so it's very difficult when moving in confined spaces. The third option is the uh, Krav which is a modern challenger based vehicle. Um, again this is a very smelly noisy thing which we don't like to keep in the hall unless we absolutely have to but it's great for towing up and down the road. And this year we have a fourth option which is a small electric vehicle which weighs four tonnes and is capable of towing 25 tonnes. Um, it's uh, going to be a big help to us because it'll save us breathing diesel fumes in while we're doing this big move. We always have to be aware of the fragility and the age of the vehicles in the World War II hall. So when we tow any of them, we have to be really careful. Um, we, we have found out from last year that there's um, an aid that we can use. It, and basically it's an eight by four sheet of plastic, which is oil based. So when the tank is sat on these sheets, it slides very easy on the floor. What this enables us to do is to be able to do tight turns with the vehicle on the spot. Uh, and we found that we can move Tiger or, or Yag Tiger quite easily uh, using these sheets. Yag Tiger is the heaviest tank in World War II haul and probably the most difficult to move. Um, you can see by, by the size of the towing eyes just the sheer weight of this tank, which is around about 70 tonnes. It also has huge, wide, aggressive track, um, so the pads are going to be a must to enable us to turn it. Another vehicle of concern is the Buffalo. As you can see on the Panzer II looks, you can see that it's got two really well-placed towing eyes which we can fit our towing bars to. On the Buffalo, 
it's really awkward because it has only one towing eye in the centre, which is used for towing up at, um, in port as well as towing the vehicle. Um, we don't quite know how to tow this one, but I'm sure we'll find a way. But that is a concern and we can't practice because we have no other vehicle that we can try it on. Part of the buffalo move means that we've got to take the weasel out of the back. It was never designed to go in there because as you can see, we couldn't shut the door. So once the, once the weasel's out, we can actually display the buffalo in a much better light. The next one, the M46, makes my knees knock. I think this probably will be the most difficult move of the entire uh, move. Um, first of all, we'll move Black Prince, which is this one here, and, and then the M46. The problem we have with the M46 is that it was put in place before the memorial room was built. And so we've ended up with a very, very small allowance for getting out. So if you look up to the front of the tank, there's only a few inches between the, the room and the, the end of the barrel, and the same at the back of the tank. The only way I think we can get it out is to drag it sideways. So what we're going to do is jack the tank up one side at a time and put mats underneath um, so the tank will slide on the mats and then put lots and lots of soapy water and drag it out using the Terex and uh, Centurion Arv. And then once we've got it out we don't know whether the tank rolls or not so that's, that's another problem that we've got to address. We shall know when the tank's finally pulled out in the positions that we can tow it. During this major move, when we're doing this new exhibition, it's sort of divided into two teams. Mike inside the museum, and what he's doing is getting the tanks out initially, marking out the spaces for the new exhibition, and then all of the exhibits come back in. While that's going on, it's my job to house them in some of the real estate that's around the museum. And as you can see, in order to get them all in place and under cover and in this dry, then we need to pack them in quite tightly.
As you may know, the Tank Museum raises funds through Patreon to support the videos on our YouTube channel. Thanks to our patrons, we are now raising enough money to be able to fund a workshop apprentice. This is in addition to the film apprentice we also fund through Patreon. As part of a three-year apprenticeship through the Heritage Skills Academy at Bista, our apprentice, Aaron Cruz, will be learning what it takes to look after historic vehicles. I'm Aaron Cruz, I'm 21, and I'm an apprentice here at the Tank Museum. Why did you want to work at the Tank Museum? I've always visited the Tank Museum when I was young uh, with my dad and granddad the first time. Um, then I came when I was a bit older, about 17, 18. Kept coming back because I was so uh, intrigued by the vehicles that were here. Uh, then I heard about the apprenticeship and I thought, that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> I want to work on these vehicles. Uh, so I applied and luckily I got the uh, opportunity to be apprentice here at the Trinity. I was surprised that I got it. I didn't really come from a mechanical background. Um, it's all new to me, but I've always had a keen interest of learning and especially mechanical side of it. So it meant everything I got it. It was the first apprenticeship that I ever applied for and I got it. So I was, I was ecstatic. I was, yeah. Was it sort of the history side of things or was the engineering side of things? I mean, what was it that...? A bit of both. Uh, I've always been interested in army uh, stuff when I was young. I always had toy tanks and stuff like that. Coming here has just made it even more of a well opportunity to play with the tanks, really, <laughs> at the end of it. What do your friends and family think about you having this apprenticeship? They're always asking, well, what did you do today? And uh, what did you get up to? And it's kind of got normal. They're always interested and always a bit jealous of I get to play with these giant machines. Were they pleased that you got the apprenticeship? Yeah, yeah, they were. What sort of projects have you been able to work on? Uh, when I first got here, I joined in with Panzer III, uh, Centurion, Fury, Churchill. Some pretty uh, special vehicles. What's, what's the most surprising thing you've learned? that I can't fit into tanks very well. <laughs> I'm uh, quite tall and it's uh, quite surprising that uh, such a big vehicle is so little room inside. <laughs> but as well, is, um, they're not that easy to work on. You think it's such a huge thing that there'd be, like again, loads of space and everything is crammed in. Uh, for example, on the Churchill, I had to be upside down with my arm somewhere underneath the gearbox, just trying to get a uh, hydraulic feed on just doing it by touch and that is a lot of it you have to just do it by feel and touch half the time because you can't see what you're doing did you ever work on anything like cars before i mean is it different to that sort of thing oh yeah done? completely different i've worked on my own vehicles um and they're a dream compared to some of the stuff we work on here it's just you've got to try and not get frustrated at some of the stuff and sometimes it's best just walking away taking five minutes coming back and that all it takes sometimes you'll come back and do it straight away it's quite surprising and annoying at the same time 
Does it give you sort of a I mean, does it make you think <coughs> about the crews who'd have had oh, to Oh yeah, them? yeah, as well. Uh, when we were on the uh, Holland trip, that I was luckily was able to go on, being in uh, convoy and all the smoke and fumes just blowing up in your face. You think the poor people that had to fight in those conditions and everything. It's just they were uh, quite tough men, really. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's talk about Operation Market Garden. So you were able to go on 75th convoy. Yeah. What sort of, so I suppose firstly, what sort of things did you have to do to prepare for it? And what did you think of it while you were there? Prepare? Um, obviously we had a lot of prepare work for the vehicles here that we sent away. It was a lot of once over checking. They were all safe to go on the roads. We did a couple of road tests as well to make sure they could do the miles. And nothing major would happen. Uh, but actually on the uh, event itself, it was completely out of this world really. It was hard to explain. It was, everybody was so happy to see you. They were all involved. They all were grateful for what we were doing. Even though we weren't involved personally in Market Garden, it just made you feel proud for some reason. It was, it's weird. It was very weird, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you have any fixes while you are out there? I mean, did it give you an idea uh, of what? Small maintenance, uh, we had a clutch issue on uh, Morris one day, but that was literally just an adjustment problem. Uh, here we just run them for a couple of laps every now and again. To do 100 miles of plus, it's really unknown for us. Yeah. I mean, you fix things normally in like a nice set-up workshop. Mm -hmm. was, it, was it much different having to do it in the field? Um, well, yeah, you get covered a bit more dust, <laughs> um, a bit more uh, uncomfortable, but um, fixing vehicle here or there is the same thing, really. You just get on with it. <laughs> Have you enjoyed being able to ride in all of these vehicles? Yeah, when I first got here, I tried to get in everything I uh, <laughs> could get my hands on. Uh, now it's calmed down a bit. You see, oh, there's a tank again, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's some, been some memorable moments as well as I have seem to have a curse here at the museum anything I get into seems to break down but <laughs> it's one of those things people tend to uh, keep me away from their vehicles <laughs> what's the best tank you've ridden in best tank um, best tank driving in uh, riding in Matilda 2 was uh, a good experience especially as it's been restored it's so nice everything works yet again I have a bad reputation it had a little bit of a gearbox problem as I was in it unfortunately but uh, uh, Stuart uh, another tank that is a very nippy and uh, fun tank to ride in a bit small for me uh, or anybody really it's a tiny tank and yet again same problem it broke down with me in it so <laughs> it's just one of those things with me what project have you done that's that was sort of the most satisfying like you've walked away and thought that was really hard, but I'm really sort of pleased to have got it done. Churchill, um, that went out earlier this year for Tank Fest. Uh, we were really struggling with that project. We didn't think we would get it done for Tank Fest. But seeing that go out the door, go around the arena with next to no problem, problems operating quite fine. Um, it was a good feeling, especially the amount of time and effort, tears, blood you put into a vehicle. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good feeling. And obviously it didn't break down because you weren't in it. Yeah, that's true. I wasn't in it, so it didn't break down. Uh, yeah. Do you feel like you've learned a lot having done this? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. Like I said uh, before, I didn't come from a mechanical background. It was very minimum amount that I learned, uh, knew before coming here. And now I feel a lot more confident working on vehicles. Uh, knowledge is always growing, always learning day to day. I've took on my own project at home now. Um, I've Land Rover Series 2 that I've got at home, full restoration that I'm planning to do on it. Um, a lot more work than I was expecting to start with, now I've stripped it down, but I'm enjoying it either way. <laughs> so, yeah. I've been your main kind of mentor, I suppose. Bob Darwood, luckily enough. <laughs> um, yeah, working with him, you just surprise the amount of knowledge he knows. He just keeps coming out with stuff and vehicles wise his knowledge is amazing it's like how do you know that <laughs> how do you keep that information in your head it's amazing but, yeah. hopefully one day i'll be as knowledgeable as he tell me about what you're doing at the Bista heritage yeah we've just started at Bista heritage uh, apprenticeship down there at the moment we're stripping down a morris minor 1000 gearbox uh, which is a bit smaller than what we uh, normally use uh, work on here 
but it gives you the basic knowledge of how stuff works. I mean, a gearbox in a car really works the same in a tank. It's just a bit bigger. <laughs> So it's really good that you've done, well, that you are doing this apprentice. Mm. I mean, do you think, how do you think it's going to set you up for the rest of your life? I mean, is this something you want to carry on doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I definitely want to stay in the military vehicle scene. But, I mean, I wouldn't be doing this apprenticeship if I didn't want to, really. Um, it's very niche, so uh, either stay here if they accept me, <laughs> or uh, private, or own collection, maybe. <laughs> Yeah. This episode of Tank Workshop Diaries has been brought to you by Great Courses Plus. With Great Courses Plus, you can subscribe to watch amazing lectures and courses on pretty much anything that you might be interested in. Subscribers get unlimited access to a huge number of video lectures about subjects like history, engineering and photography. Today, Great Courses Plus are offering you a fantastic trial subscription offer. Click in the description below. I'd like to recommend the series Everyday Engineering, which has episodes on the internal combustion engine, torque, transmission, suspension, and other concepts we discuss here on the Tank Workshop Diaries. So click on the link in the description below to start your free trial today. You'll also be helping the Tank Museum. If you enjoyed that video, please support the Tank Museum by subscribing to their YouTube channel, and also support them on Patreon.